Thank you, Becky, for uh, letting a, an outsider from the geographic standpoint, but not an outsider with respect to this call, join you uh, today. I want to tell you how much respect I have for your law enforcement and especially for your solicitor, whom I love personally and respect professionally and, and miss. Um, the book of Ecclesiastes tells us that there's a time and a season for everything. And you can notice with the turning of the calendar from February to March that we are closing in on spring, a time of renewal, and at least for me, a time of hope. And that got me thinking about the seasons, if you will, with respect to this cause, this mission. And I think it's appropriate from time to time to stop and celebrate progress. And it may be difficult to see in a year where you've had so many domestic homicides, but trust me, 10, 12 years ago, we had tremendous challenges in this state with respect to domestic violence. There was a time when women in this state were left to fend for themselves in magistrate's court. We find that incredible to believe, that, that, that a woman would have no support from a prosecutor. She would have to stand in front of a judge and pursue her own case. Those days are no more. There was a time when domestic violence cases were treated as family matters, that you were referred for family counseling as, as opposed to being referred to law enforcement. Uh, thank the good Lord those days are gone. There was a time even in my time as a prosecutor where the cases just weren't treated the same as other kinds of criminal cases. The evidence wasn't recovered. Cindy and I had a case where, where, where a, a belt was used as a victim, but law enforcement 12 years ago didn't get the belt. Can you imagine them not getting the, the murder weapon or, or fingerprints in a burglary case? There was a time when there was no special training for, for judges or, or prosecutors or or law enforcement, those times have gone. There was a time, there was a time when politicians made jokes at the expense of domestic violence. Those politicians are no longer in the General Assembly, thank the Lord. And the two gentlemen that are with me today do not reflect that in any way, shape, or form. But let us not forget, there was a time in this state when this issue was not treated with the seriousness that it is treated today. So there is a time to celebrate. There's a time to reflect on the progress that many of you have made. There's a time for me to remember victims. And when we think about domestic violence, every one of you is going to have a different image or, or different victim go through your mind. Uh, for me, in this season, the image that goes through my mind is a, a young woman that just as easily could be speaking to you today as a member of Congress or, or a solicitor as Chrissy or myself. She was an honors graduate from Hollings University in Virginia, which is where Cindy Crick, who works with me, graduated from. She got a PhD in molecular biology she was a patent agent with the largest law firm in South Carolina. She studied for the LST, LSAT because she wanted to be a doctor and a lawyer. And her husband broke every single bone in her face with a shovel. And he did it while we were in trial for another domestic homicide in a death penalty case. We were trying one man for killing his wife outside a police station in Spartanburg, and in the middle of that trial, John Chesterman beats his wife, Liz, to death with a shovel. So it's a time to reflect on progress. It's a time to remember those who have gone. There's a time to challenge each other. And yes, men are victims of domestic violence. I, I saw it when I was a DA. But overwhelmingly, men are the perpetrators of domestic violence. And when I was starting off and we would go to these vigils and we would go to training, it was almost always women in the audience. Women were the ones who were training to be the service providers and women law enforcement 
officers were the ones who wanted to do a better job investigating the cases. And, and women like Chrissy and Cindy were the ones who were doing the domestic violence prosecutions. There was a time in South Carolina when you could go to an event like this and you wouldn't see a male face. And I, and I started wondering, well, how in the world can that be? It's not women who are committing the crimes. Where are the men? Where are the men when it comes time to ostracize other men who commit this crime? Where are the men to, to say from the pulpit, this is not a family matter, it's a crime? You know, for those of us who have daughters, we, we say we're going to do this and we're going to do that. If, if anybody ever touches our daughter and you look under the bed for the monsters and in the closet and everywhere else and, and you hold their hands when they walk through the, the parking lot when you're in the way to the grocery store or Walmart and then they hit a certain age and you just let the hand go. You think the monsters are under the bed, the monsters are in the bed and in the den, and in the kitchen, and in the driveway, and on the computers, and on the phones. So I am thrilled to see as many men here today as I do, because if you want to remove this stain on our state's soul, you're going to have to get men every bit as engaged and energetic as you have been for the decade that I've been following the cause. And so my, my last question is, is this a time for us to lead? The senator made reference to where we rank nationally. If your two college football teams rank there nationally, would you accept it? Would you? If Carolina or Clemson or Furman or Walford or whoever you pull for, how long would you accept that? Would you accept it a decade's worth of being either last in the nation or second to last in the nation? What if your schools ranked there? What if your law enforcement ranked there? What if your DA's office ranked there? How long would you take it? And yet for a decade, it's where we've been. So the challenge today is, is this a season for us to lead? I hope it is. I am reminded the words of a Southern preacher written from a jail cell in Birmingham. Time is never neutral. It either helps you or it hurts you. It's never neutral. Is this a time for us to lead? I hope so. I congratulate you on this wonderful achievement, providing a safe harbor for women who desperately need it. Hopefully, one day, we will be in the top 10 in leading in the fight against domestic violence and not in the bottom 10. Thank you.